Hello and welcome everyone to the most magical show in the keyboard community. I'm your host Merlin and if it's your first time here, thank you so much for joining in. I build keyboards from the hardware to the software end and tonight we're doing software. If it's your first time to this particular segment, I call this porting with ports in which I port boards into QMK firmware while drinking port. But tonight I have something a little bit different. As some of you might know, let's see. I've been doing a lot of VIA work lately. And as a result, I figured I'd drink something that's relevant to both Olivia and Wilba, the two people who make VIA possible. So tonight, <laughs> I'm drinking rose just because Olivia is known as the rose gold queen. And Yellowtail Rosé specifically, because this is from Australia, so I figured I'll drink some rosé. I'll also probably stay sober longer, just because these things are, what, only 10% alcohol content, as opposed to the 20% that I drink on port. Let's say, who is on tonight? 17 viewers, thank you guys so much. Let's see, who's there? Zark, Janky Render... George MK, Olivia, Olivia, of course. <laughs> yeah. So I know very little about about um, Rosé. This is probably, I'd say, maybe the third Rosé I've ever drank in my life. So I don't know. We'll see. We'll see if I like it. Uh, I'm noticing I'm a tad too too hot on the mic there. Let me scale it back a bit. There we go. There we go. Mm -mm -mm. Let's see. Yeah. Um, kind of tastes like Chardonnay to me. Hopefully like the pink or the, or the rose goldness is being caught on camera. But yeah, it just tastes like Chardonnay to me. I'm not... I guess I'm not a rosé connoisseur yet. <laughs> Let's see. All right, all right. So, usually when I begin these streams on Tuesday, I just like to talk about some of the things that I've acquired over the past week. Um, some of you may know that I did not have a stream this Saturday, mainly because I was in Vancouver. So just wanted to show some of the awesome things that I acquired while I was in Vancouver. Let's play some music while we're at it. Here we go. Okay, let me put the wine away, lest I knock it over. But here we go. I didn't actually acquire that much from Vancouver, but one of the things I did get was this. This is a Vancouver meetup-specific desk mat. So we're just going to open it up. I met people such as Janky Render, actually. So if you were the first 200 people who registered, mainly if you were the early bird, you got, you scored yourself a nice little dust mat. Zark says, F4 doesn't, doesn't have E prompt support in QMK and Nova uses F4, uh-oh. Well, we'll see. We'll figure it out. Okay, okay. I don't really have much table room here, but here. This is definitely much a much thinner dust mat than I normally see. Here, but look, it's the Vancouver skyline. You guys can see that, the Vancouver skyline. So it's a much thinner dust mat compared to even like the Novel Keys ones. It's actually thinner than what I have right here, but I'm sure it'll do the job. It smells, it smells very rubbery as opposed to other dust mats that I've tried. But yeah, I think, look, look, look. Look guys, it even says Vancouver Mac Meetup right there. So then, yeah, I like it. 
I don't know where I'll put it. Maybe I'll bring it to work and use it as my desk, my desk mat there. But it kind of doesn't make sense, you know, because it's like, why do you have a Vancouver desk mat? Who knows? Maybe, maybe Seattle will take some plays from the from the Vancouver playbook and make our own desk mat, not just, you know, not just T-shirts and stickers. But because both my wife and I registered early, we both got one. So maybe she'll use hers at at her work. All right, let's see. So I'll show other stuff. But over the past week, while I was gone in Vancouver, actually, I got a bunch of stuff in the mail. So it was... It, it was a pleasure to, to, to like come home and find a bunch of packages. Do you guys remember this build? The Discipline 65 by Cozy Fanatuti. If you guys want to check out his website, it's cftkb.com. He sells a bunch of kits just like this. I posted the link in chat. You know, very, very simple. Everything is through hold from the diodes to the microcontroller to the reset key, all of that good stuff, right? I actually got another package from him. I found this in the mail. Mysterium. So it's not actually a Mysterium, but for those of you who are curious, Mysterium, this is TKL variant of his through hole kit. But what he actually sent me, here we go. Why don't we take a look at it together? If I can tear it apart. <laughs> tear apart, oh. Zark says, I've got two Mysteriums to build. You guys can already probably guess what it is. But if you were on the stream a couple weeks ago, you might have noticed that Cozy, who is actually quite, quite a frequent viewer, talked about a case. This is the case. It's basically just a sandwich case, as you can see. Lots of standoffs going through it. It's angled as well. You can see it's 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 acrylic feet, and it's got a. I'd say this is a polycarb plate, the looks of it. Let's see. Yeah, so all all white. So eventually, hopefully this guy, I will rebuild this guy at, at some future build stream and put him in, in here. Like so. You know, I will have to desolder this whole guy first. So we shall see, we shall see. In some future build stream, I will put them together. Let's see. Cozy says it's Palm. Wow, that's, that's pretty cool. I didn't realize. So it's funny. This will be the third keyboard that I own that uses a Palm plate. The first one was my Sirius, then my Satisfaction, and now this. Three Palm plated boards. Janky says, too bad there weren't any satisfactions at the meetup. Yeah, I, I chose not to bring it. I was already bringing a lot of stuff and, and it worked out anyway because my, my wife got sick in the, in the middle of, of the whole thing. So one less thing to worry about. Another item I got, another package I got was from TKC. TKC is another company here in the United States. They're known as the Key Company. If you want to check out their website, they have a few group buys running in, such as Infinity Key Hive, the Godspeed 75 keyboard, and GMK Future Funk. But they sent me a few T-shirts. Hopefully, it's in the right size. L, yes, L. Got one of those. One of those. I'll probably wear these on stream someday. 
lots of key paraphernalia to wear to meetups and all that. But the whole purpose of them sending me all this stuff was actually this. This is one of the PCBs you can purchase from TKC. They wanted me to see if I could port it into QMK. So I won't be doing that tonight because I have to research how to do this. I don't even know if it's completely possible, but we'll see. We'll see. And from the looks of it, I think that's an ARM microcontroller. I can see ARM on it, but I can't. Oh wait, looks like it's an F303. So yeah, that is indeed possible. That is indeed possible. Sent me a few stickers. The key.co. Key.co. And one thing that I really, really appreciate him sending is I can finally rebuild my Dolch pack with QMK hardware or QMK supported hardware. Not only did he send me a plate, plate for that, but a PC, a PCB TKC 1800. Look at that. Very nice. I can finally replace. Let me pull out that board. I can finally replace this guy. This guy. This guy right here. This is one of the first customs that I that I ever put together. Um, it is running a Gigon PCB. One of the, I think it was a L, LK, LK1800. It was like a Liku 1800. This is an original Dolch Pack 60 case. Um, let's see, back then, these were all just Cherry MX Reds. I had Cherry MX Reds on, on this half and Cherry MX Blue on the numpad. Vintage Blue, might I add. I used it for a while. Well, I did not get OG Dolch on this actually. And besides, I don't really like Dolch. I like Hyperfuse better. So here it is. Ooh, let me turn on my light a bit brighter. There we go. That's it. I even put a little mod there. So I, I could have, have a detachable cable mod. But yeah, I'll finally have a QMK supported 1800 once I once I put it together. We'll see. Yeah, I think I bought just this, just this keyboard alone off eBay for about 40 bucks. Cuz Dolch wasn't on it. If you wanted Dolch on it, then you then you had to spend maybe like I think up, upwards of $400. You know. And I was not willing to spend that much. That was, that was way too much for, for me to spend back in... When did I get this? I think I got this in 2016. Definitely not the board that I wanted to spend 400 on. So another item that I got Another item that I got while I was in Vancouver is probably the one keyboard that I've been waiting for since 2018. The Zeno. It finally arrived. Well, it didn't arrive. I had to go pick it up. But yeah, back in 2018, I purchased a board from Zeal PC called the Zeno. This is a 75%, and it just took forever. So finally, about two weeks ago, I'm like, hey, Zeal, any chance I'll have a Zeno when the Vancouver meetup rolls around? And he's like, yes, actually, yes. So let's unbox it. There were horror stories about um, QC. So we'll see how it, how it looks on stream. On stream. On stream. If any of you have purchased a Zephyr, it's like the same kind of packaging. It's really, really nice. Look at that. 
I have not opened this yet. Look at that. That's so pretty. Nordic subscribed at tier one. Thank you so much. Resub resubscribed for eight months. Thank you. Yeah, we are going to unbox this. And you guys will all see if there are any manufacturing defects. You actually bought a portable monitor with the same packaging, says Olivia. Very cool. So yeah, this is the first time that I'm opening this. Let's see, let me push the keyboard away a little bit more. Whew, so excited. Ooh, okay. Bubble wrap. Ah, oh, very nice. PCB. Let's lift up like that. Okay. That part's the PCB. These are designed by Wilba. I believe it's the WT75-A. Via compatible and QMK compatible. Look at that. Isn't that beautiful? And of course, the actual keyboard itself. Oh my gosh. Look at all these little weights on the side. Whew. These ribbons, what the heck? What? <laughs> Nothing in there. <laughs> it's empty. What's this? Oh, there we go. There's something in there. Blue Luster says, is your camera on a tripod? No, I am holding it. Oh, cool. It came with stabs. That's very interesting. Stabs and feet. Yeah, these are the stabs. So that's really excessive, but really, really nice. <laughs> You think that was in the Zephyr packaging too? That's, that's that's empty. What was this supposed to be? I'm super curious. Yeah, that's empty. Nothing in there. This like unboxing experience almost feels like it's supposed to be like there's supposed to be perfume in here or something. <laughs> and look. I'm drinking rosé. It, it matches my rose gold plate. Oh, if you bought switches, it should be in the box. Okay. So I am putting holy pandas in this. OG holy pandas. Okay. Ooh. Let's lift that up. Oh yeah. Wow, I really like this. Okay, I'm not seeing, I'm not noticing any manufacturing de defects yet, you know? <laughs> so far, so good. Let me take it out of the plastic. Oh man. Whew. That is very beautiful. Let me lower the light of my camera. There we go. There we go. Too much. There we go.
This might be my next favorite 75. So even though I have silver top, silver bottom, it almost looks like the top of my Xeno. The silver is a different shade of silver. I think you guys can even see that on, on the camera. Can you guys see that? It's like a different shade of silver, top and bottom. Two-tone silver, maybe. KVS says, Merlin, what's up? What's up to you too? And thanks for joining in. I like it. I like it very, very much. That's pretty, pretty hefty. I would say this is about uh, unbuilt. Probably about five pounds right now. Four or five pounds. Not bad. Oh, hold on. I see a manufacturing defect. Yep, I see a small chip over here. Very, very faint. Like you, like you can't even feel it, but I can definitely see it. Small, small little chip. Is it really a, is it really a chip? Yeah, it is, it is. Very, very faint though. Anything else? Nope. Anything else? Ooh, okay. Yeah, so far so good. So far so good. Jeremy says, board is ruined. Send to me for closer inspection. Oh yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It's, it's, it's garbage now, you know. Might as well throw it away. But yeah, I am putting in... Holy pandas in this. So the pink and white should mesh very nicely with the silver and, and rose gold. Oh look, I think I see another one. I see another little mark. Yep, there's one right there. One tiny mark above the F. F6 key. So yeah, one one there on the back and one tiny mark above the F6 key. The plate itself looks fine. I'm not seeing anything. Oh wait. I see a tiny scratch on the plate. I rub it off. Okay, yeah. I just rubbed it off. Yeah, plate looks mostly fine. How about the weight? Okay, I'm seeing some tooling marks on the plate. I mean, on the weight. Yep, that's tooling marks. It's not coming off. All right, not not perfect. Not perfect, but nothing, nothing that bad, to be honest. Nothing that bad. I can live, I can deal with it. Put it back in the plastic. Seal it up. Seal it up. This is probably one of the nicest unboxing experiences that I've had though. It's really nice. Yeah. There we 
go. Yay! I finally have my Zeno. I just have to find time to actually build it. Thanks for sharing that with us. Yeah, of course. Let's put the PCB over it. And for those of you who have a Zephyr, I'm assuming it's the same kind of deal. Let's see, where, where was that? Here we go. Oh, and build streams. I live vicariously through streamer unboxings. Ugh. Funny. Yeah, that was put on like that, I believe. That on, like so. Zeno. I don't know when I'll build this. Hopefully soon, because I have been waiting. Another board. Ah. All right, another package that I received. This time, courtesy of Olivia. It was the Matrix Noah? She also sent me switches that I need to lube. Look at that. I've actually never tried these before, but apparently they are 63.5 grams. Not bad. Not bad. Hopefully they'll feel better once I lube them. Yeah, if you, if you guys haven't heard of the Noah, this is a 65% board courtesy of Matrix Labs in China. A pretty cool design right there. They are also responsible for the, I believe the Able series of boards you've seen any of those and the funny thing is this is actually one of their first boards that is QMK compatible at this time there is already QMK support for this and you can edit it you can edit your your key map using QMK and QMK configurator and today's task is to actually add via support for this that Duncan yo-yo thanks for subscribing let's see what is this oh look there are c3 stabs right here c3 stabs stab wires I suppose Olivia wants me to build it at some point too here we go, all of the necessary mounting hardware. Very nice. Zark says, which might be a problem. Yeah, we'll see, we'll see. Like, just like all QMK ports don't end up being successful, I'm assuming not all VIA will be successful either. But we will see tonight how far we can get. Look at that. So apparently there are multiple daughter boards with this kit. There's the USB-C daughter board and there's this other daughter board that seems to be, oh, RGBs, it's for RGBs. This long strip is for RGBs. This one is for USB-C.
like that. Raging Asian, subscribe to tier one. All right. We'll be lost when power is lost. Yeah. The PCB itself is wrapped in this paper envelope. See-through envelope. I feel like this is the kind of paper that you use when you deliver wedding invites. <laughs> that very pretty and this is actually surprising I was assuming I would I would see a rose gold keyboard but instead I got a black keyboard I'm like is this really Olivia did Olivia really send this to me I'm so confused right now <laughs> Look at that, it's black. It's, it's supposed to be rose gold. x -Bash, um, change of time, probably daylight savings. That's why she didn't keep it, says Jeremy. Look at that, here, I'm gonna pull it out. This is a very light board. Compared to my Xeno, this is super light. Super light. Look at that. Look at the back. So you can see you have, I think you have the option to see which side your USB-C comes out. At least that's what someone told me. bottom matrix looks very busy but you like it yeah it's got a very interesting design it's got a blocker which I really like it's very interesting I guess I will go more into detail once I actually start building it But for now, it will sit in a case and we'll just play with the PCB. See how far it goes. Is that a reset switch in the X? Let me take a look. A reset switch in the X? I did not notice. This? <laughs> no, it's not. It's totally not. <laughs> that, that would be funny if it was. It's just a... Uh... It's just design. It's design. It's interesting. All right, we'll just leave it, leave it there for now. Leave it there for now. Accent dot, yeah, I know. Accent dot, okay. Stabilizers, all that. Reset switch daughter board. It's just the daughter board just for the that that reset switch Would be pretty funny mm. Yeah, this tastes just like Chardonnay Then again, I didn't exactly buy the most expensive of rosés. I believe I believe this bottle that I purchased was just like 10 bucks or something. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. All right, all right. So as I was saying, this stream is all about adding QMK firmware support to boards or adding VIA support to boards. Um, tonight, we'll be attempting to put VIA on a board such as this. Theoretically, you should be able to put VIA on any QMK board that's currently within QMK. There are some gotchas though. One of the gotchas is at Mega32A boards don't work. So all the bootmapper client boards that we have managed to put QMK on will not work 
until we solve the V USB problem. Um, Zark has mentioned a few things with this board already. So we'll see. We'll see how far we can get with this. Overall, the process will still be the same. Uh, even though we don't get that far in this, the process, like, there's mainly two parts to doing this. It's the QMK firmware part and then the VIA JSON part. Those two parts will be identical no matter what board you go through. Whether the board will actually work or not is a different story. But we'll get there when we get there. Let's see who's talking right now. I see... Duncan Yoyo says super low FPS tonight for some reason, only getting like 15 to 25. Um, I normally have it at 24 FPS. Do you know if it's possible to join Matrix GBs? You can only join them from China. Well, I'm assuming Olivia got it through, through a GB. <laughs> Did you see the HN keyboard article? No, I did not. They linked to a two-year-old QMK issue. Interesting. HN issue? Mm -mm -mm. I'll go read up on that later. Right here, okay, hold on. Before we continue doing this, before I start on this procedure, I would like to talk about some of my wonderful sponsors first. Let's do that really quick. guys this this channel would not be possible without some of my very very generous sponsors and I just want to take a few moments just to talk about them what they're currently doing right now as I showed earlier on stream I have a Zeno that I just well I didn't just purchase it from Zeal but I just received it from Zeal Zeal is located in Vancouver Canada and he's known for his boutique and expensive switches he currently has a sale on, let's see, what does he have a sale on? He has a sale on his turquoise Helio switches and his aqua Island switches. And I think these are the only two that are currently still available. Oh, and, and Helios as well. If you guys want to check him out, definitely check out his website using my affiliate link. And I get a small kickback from all purchase purchases there. Oh look, it's the Zeno. How much how much were Zenos when they came out? Oh, 460 bucks. Dang. Okay, okay. I can understand why now. 460. Yep, yep, yep. Cool, cool. Okay. My next my next sponsor is Novel Keys. Novel Keys is located in West Virginia, also a U.S. retailer. Um, they've been around for a good number of years now. If you guys want to support their store, definitely check out their ongoing group buys. I believe they have three. They have GMK Darling, Cam Wraith, and they're also doing a pre-order for Olivia Plus Plus Stabilizers. I have been told that even though these are C3 stabs, these are the retooled C3 stabs, so they will work with Enjoy PBT caps. So if you're interested in pink, like so, definitely check them out. Their third group buy, which I didn't talk about last time, oh, I did actually, was GMK Zuying. And their fourth one, which I didn't talk about last time, is this the JTK Classic FC? And what's what's special about this one? This one is, I believe it's it's not, it's triple shot. 
Yeah, there we go. Triple shot ABS Latin and Hiragana Legends. Which is why, even though it's a JTK kit, it costs $100. Pretty close to GMK pricing because it's triple shot. I kind of want to see a photo of what one of the one of the keycaps looks like from the back. But I don't think he has any of those photos. But check it out, guys. Look at that. See? So you've got your red English legend. Then you have your black Hiragana legend. Then you have your white keycap. So that's three different plastics in one keycap. Look at that. Um, I'm not a big fan of red, but I am a fan of triple shot. I have some old school triple shots from back in the day. So yeah, I'll probably get in on this. But $100, let's see. It would cost me if I did the base, which is 100 I did the novelties, 32 bucks, $132. Yeah, that's about, that's about GMK pricing. Yeah. Oh, check this out, guys. Alphas are only $10. Whoa. No way. Really? You can buy just a bunch of double shot alphas for 10 bucks. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Anyway, not like my discount code works on any of these, but if you guys want to check out Novel Keys and all that and want to buy some stuff from them, hit up Novel Keys. And if you use discount code wizard, you will get 5% off all of your orders, excluding pre-order, extras, and group buy items such as these. But this is really cool. $10 just for the alphas. Mm-hmm. All right, my next sponsor is Dixie Mac. Dixie Mac is another US retailer located in Alabama. He's currently running GMK Moto Lite. Base kit is under 100 bucks. What Moto Lite stands for is Modern Dolch. Let's see. Yeah, he comes with a you, you can purchase a Rama keycap, a similarly color themed cable, a desk mat, in addition to the actual key set, all that stuff. But what I want to point out to for, on, on Dixie Mac is that he runs an event called Mech Madness, Mech Madness 2020. Basically the whole, similar to March Madness, which is a very, you know, um, this is it's a it's a very big deal here in the United States when a lot of college basketball teams play against each other, and that happens in March, hence the name March Madness. So Dixie is doing something similar, but instead of basketball, it's keyboards, keyboards and key sets. So you have until the 29th of this month of this month to submit all your brackets. I believe he also started posting prizes depending on how far you can go for keyboard bracket prizes. I think, oh, here we go. I think you can win a key cult. You can win a key cult and you can win a duck sidewinder, GMK Haman or, or Haman Rama cap. Oh, here we go. Okay, now I know what this is like. So first place is any future key cult keyboard. Second place is the duck sidewinder. Third place is an NK65 kit. Fourth place is a minivan kit. Followed by an ortho 75, and then a hundred dollar gift card to project keyboard. Wow, it just keeps going. Seventh place, you get you can get a Rama knob, Rama Hamon egg keycap. It just keeps going on and on. So that's just for keyboards. For the key set bracket, you can potentially win first place. Oh God, really? 
<laughs> okay, so apparently in first place, you will get the Linus Tech Tip sign Bauer with the Salvin brass keycaps. That is first place for the for the key set bracket. <laughs> Didn't he like bang this on something? Isn't it gonna come like scuffed? <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. Um, second place is gonna be GMK Oblivion V2. The Savage 65 and a Rama Oblivion cap. Third place, MT3 Susa Watari. Fourth place, SA Lime. DSS Tekla. Shout outs to Cassidy, because she's she's in Seattle too. Sixth place, Infiniki. So there's there's Hive, Bread. Rama Haman egg keycap and cables again. So yeah, you got up up to 10th place for like both of them. That's pretty cool. Olivia says he hit the table with it. So hopefully he didn't damage it. But yeah, there's a lot lots of prices this time around. But yeah, if you guys want to win some cool some really really cool prizes, definitely participate in Mech Madness. And what's different this year is there's also a desk mat bracket. Interesting. First place is a TGR Alice. Second place is a Molly. Then you got Hana, Infiniki Sanctuary, Infiniki White on Black, Black on White, and I guess Rama, Rama Apparel for seventh and eighth place, and then followed by Cables. Cool. Cool, that's really awesome. It's really awesome. Definitely everyone, everyone please participate. The more people who, who participate, the more fun it is. All right. My my fourth sponsor is Kibio. Kibio is also a fellow QMK collaborator. Um, he's also known as Baking Pie or Danny. If you use discount code wizard hat you can get up to 15 percent off on some items such as the pro micro the levinson and fortunately not the iris but i believe the choco pad as well so definitely check out his website he's also located here in the united states i think yeah i think all of my sponsors are located here in the united states <laughs> all right last but not the least my newest sponsor is Project Keyboard. Um, he's currently, yeah, he, he just became my sponsor like last week, I believe. No, two, two weeks ago. He's been sponsoring this channel off and on just like with random stuff, either through subscriptions, donating subs to a bunch of people online randomly, sending me keyboards to give away, yada, yada. And I figured it's time. It's time to be an official affiliate. But yeah, if you check out, if you want to check out his website, oops, I just realized I forgot to link Dixie's. <laughs> so let me just spam all of you guys. Dixie Mac. Oh wait, I guess it says Dixie. There we go, Dixie. Keybio. And last but not the least, Project Keyboard. There we go. He's currently running. GMK Perestroika. Just a few weeks ago, he was running like the like the mauve and lilac switches. Hopefully, those come back soon. I missed out. I waited a little too long. But if you guys are interested in an all all red key set, unlike Hamon, but more like a little more subdued <laughs> with Cyrillic Legends, definitely check this out. MOQ is 250 for base. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm not sure this is a set for me. As I said earlier, I'm not too big a fan of red. But who knows, who knows? I might just change my mind later on. Look at all that. Got so many renders. Okay, I guess it looks good, red on red. That's the thermal, isn't it? Mm. 
Ooh, very nice. Wow, that's so many renders. Oh my gosh. All right. But yeah, those are my sponsors. And without them, this channel would have much difficulty. But other ways to other ways to help out this channel is definitely by all of your subscriptions and all of your follows, all of your likes and all that. So thank you everyone for doing that for me. All right. It's time to actually doing the via portion of the show. Let's, let's set this up real quick. Potlay says, hello, hello to you too. Thanks for joining in. Let me just pour myself another glass of rosé. Yeah, what's its alcohol content? 11.5%, yeah, that is a lot less than port. I mentioned earlier, port is like, what? 18 to 20%. This is only 11.5%. Do you, do you think you might fill out your bracket on stream today? No, I won't actually. I think I need to put a lot of time into it. Though coincidentally last year, I just like randomly selected a few boards and I was doing really well up till the Second to last week of the tournament. Olivia will send me some rosé in the future. Why, thank you. Why, thank you. All right. Okay. So here we go. Let's let's just talk about what what's needed for like via support. Let me bring up. Let me bring up my little screen here. So I'm learning how to do this as well. So expect mistakes. But one thing that will definitely help me out is if I do split screen mode like this, so you guys can see what I'm doing in code and what I'm doing with the KLE. Makes it so much easier, so much easier. So one thing that you wanna do is, good, I'm on master. Let's just do, Let's make a branch really quick. There we go. What we wanna do, so this only works. Like I'm, I'm assuming the board is already in QMK. If it's not in QMK, that's a whole different ballpark. And you can watch my, my other VODs to see how I do that. Cause it can take a while. Just like poking away at the matrix can take at least an hour. Let's see, what's the name of this board? Oh yeah, this is the Matrix. The Matrix Noah. Matrix Noah, where are you? Matrix Noah, here we go. So yeah, adding in QMK firmware support to a, I mean, at, at adding in via support to QMK is as simple as creating a key map named via. And the way I like to do this is basically just to copy and paste the default. So now you have something called default copy. Let's rename that as via, like so. So first thing you gotta do, according to Wilba, is you need to have four layers. So let's do zero through three, actually. Clear out this layer right there. Let's just clear out some of them. Like it's best to to start out with with the same via key map. And I'm saying that from experience because I recently flashed my Satisfaction 75. And what happened was that the, the default key map didn't have a reset key. 
So I'm having to open up my board at some point in the future just to reflash it again. But hopefully I won't have to do that once I do that. Okay. There we go. I've cleared out that entire map. Zero, one, two. We're missing one more. Three. Let's add another one. Zero, one, two, three. There we go. We should do it. Let's see. Oops, looks like I have an extra K there. Let's take out that K. Take out that K. Let's make sure that I did not screw anything else up by trying to compile it really quick. Probably, probably screwed something up, but we'll see. Ah, there we go. Excellent. Requires 68 arguments, but only 67 given. Holy crap! 159, what are you doing? Subscribed at tier 1? And you're also sending people? Oh my gosh. That's one... 10, 10 tier one subs. Thank you so much. I was just talking about you earlier <laughs> of like how you tend to do these things. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you so much, 159. Okay, what am I missing here? Line 21, I think. Mm. Require sixty. Yeah, what one fifty nine is just way too generous with that. Thank you so much again, man. Default layout requires 68 arguments, but only 67 given. Looks like I'm missing, I'm missing one, but where am I missing it? Erg, I'll just do it again. Merlin, look at the screen. I am looking at the screen. Mr. Petrov, you said another one. 10 tier one subs. Oh my gosh. Wow. Dang, man. Thank you, Mr. Petrov. Merlin didn't know us. <laughs> what? Olivia? What? Another 10 tier one subs. Thank you so much. I have a very small screen here on, on my second monitor. What the heck? Oh my gosh, you guys got 38 Raiders from Max on deck as well. <laughs> Holy crap, man. Holy crap. Holy crap. Yeah, thank you, 159, Mr. Petrov and Olivia for your, each of you doing 10 tier one subs. And thank you, Max on deck. Thank you, Max on deck for rating me with 38 people. Stash builds board says, what's up? What's up, man? Cozy, what? Oh my gosh. What the heck? I haven't even coded anything and I'm ready to get so many. Thank you guys for your generosity. For that, for that, I'm gonna pour myself another glass. <laughs> Thank you so much. Starston, what? Oh my gosh, Starston, thank you. Jeez, you guys are so generous. You guys make me feel so special. You guys make me like feel all warm and fuzzy inside. That could just be the alcohol, but. <laughs> <laughs> 
but I do feel warm and fuzzy inside right now. <laughs> Thank you guys, you guys are so awesome. Seriously, you guys. Oh, I'm so happy. <laughs> All right, but yeah, okay, for you 38 Raiders who just joined the channel, um, if it's your first time here, I basically build keyboards, but not just on the hardware end, I also build it on the software end, or as in the case tonight, I am attempting to build something on the software end, and while I do that, while I'm doing that, I tend to drink alcohol. Today, I'm drinking something with a much lower alcohol content at only 11.5%, but usually it's higher in the 20s. So I'm supposed to be more coherent tonight, but we'll see, we'll see how far I go. So right now I'm teaching people how to put VIA support in. And yeah, today I've, what have I done so far? I have, I've unboxed a Xeno and I've unboxed a Noah. So I've, here, let me show off the Noah again, which is what the VIA support is going to go into. This is actually Olivia's board, which she has so graciously sent me. Not for me to keep, though I wish. I highly wish so after unboxing it. That's the PCB. Not for me to keep, but for me to put VIA support in. And apparently I need to lube switches for her. So here it is. But yeah, here it is. Surprise, surprise, it is not rose gold. It is black. Oh my gosh, more subscribers? What? You guys. You guys. Thank you so much. Now look at that. It's black. Not rose gold. I am... I'm kind of disappointed, to be honest, but... <laughs> You know, did, did this even come in rose gold? Wait, I, I, I just have to look it up. I just have to look it up. Did this board come in rose gold? I see a rose gold in the photo. Oh, no, wait, that's just, yeah, no, no, it's, it's pink, not really rose gold. It didn't come in rose gold, I don't think. Okay, so I must be looking at just a render then. Lies. Yeah, I see gray. I see yellow. Okay, okay. Yeah, if you guys want to see what I'm looking at, I'm looking at the renders listed on the Geek Hack page right there, which I've linked in chat. Yeah, the render has a pink in it, but I don't see rose gold mentioned anywhere. But yeah, maybe it didn't. Maybe it didn't. But I think black is a fine keyboard. Black, bl black in, in my opinion, works really well with with Olivia. Where'd I get the Noah from? The Noah is from Olivia, and apparently Olivia bought it aftermarket. Everything looks good on black. Yeah, I can see that. I can see that. I really like this case. Powered by Matrix Labs since 2015. Dang, these guys are old school. Oh, cool. Normally, you don't find anything on the back of their case, but this has proven me wrong. Ooh, this got a bunch of follows. G6, Frequency OL, 86T, EOMFD. Thanks for following, guys. Brass color options, rose gold PVD. Oh, couldn't she have sent the PCB? She could have sent the PCB, but I think I'm also gonna be building this. Oop, that's upside down. <laughs> I think I'll be building this for her. Once all is said and done, I'll be building the Noah for her.
Oh man. Oh gosh. I, I am still so floored. Thank you again. One one fifty nine Olivia and Mr. Petrov. Thanks guys. Thanks thanks so much. And also this is Starston and Dog Hair Don't Care. A couple other people. And mechs on deck for for like rating. Thank th thank you so much, guys. Thank you so much, guys. And cozy fanatuti, did he do it too? Oh my gosh! I'm sorry, cozy. Let's see. I'm, I'm like scrolling up right now. Did you? Oh yeah, you did, dude. Thank you. Thank you so much. Dang, so many. Holy crap, guys. Holy crap. All right, just because you did that, I gotta show off your board again, Kosi. Here we go. Discipline, there's your discipline. Let's see. And here we go. This, I'm actually pretty excited to building this that you just sent me. I've been very um, cautious with this board because it's open like that, you know? I've been super cautious carry carrying it to work and stuff. But with this case, I won't be so cautious anymore. <laughs> you know? So yeah, thank you guys. Thank you so much. All right, okay, let's get back to what the stream is supposed to be about. <laughs> I am attempting to put Via on the Noah, and I'm literally on step one. Step one is making a key map named Via. That's, that's, that's pretty much it. Let me scroll back to that page. So what I've done is I've created a key map named Via, and it is keymap.c. Originally, it only had two layers, like so. Like so. Let's just make sure that compiled. And I screwed up adding the two additional layers. I'm just gonna try it again. But it looks like it works. Boom. Let's try that again. Let's try that again. This time I won't mess it up. Famous last words, right? This time I won't fail. Here, let's try. How am I doing so far? It's still compiling. Yep, it's still compiling. Whew. Still compiling? Yep, still compiling. Okay. So far I'm doing better than I did the first time. Ah. Most excellent. Okay. It's working. It's working. Okay. There we go. So now I have four layers. Four layers. This is the first thing that you need to do. Um, because I copied it from default. In most cases, default firmware or default key map only has two layers. But Wilbur has asked me to make sure that all via firmware has four layers defined regardless if they're populated or not. One thing you want to be absolutely sure in is your default via firmware or your default via key map should have a reset key so you can recover and anything else that you deem important. Especially if you're like, you know, setting up your key map with via is extremely easy. But if you have to start from nothing, that still takes time. So make sure you have a, a sane key map, let's just say. 
151 says, so 159 says, step one, get tipsy. Yes, you need to reach the bomber point in order to program at peak potential. I think I'm way past that at this point. We'll see though. Okay, second thing you need to do. Second thing you need to do within the via directory, create another file called rules.mk. In rules.mk, do via underscore enable all caps equals yes, followed by LTO underscore enable equals yes. Via enable enables via. LTO enable means link time optimi optimization enable. What this does to, is it optimizes it in the most or, or it compiles in the most optimized way possible so that it saves space on your EEPROM or on your flash actually. So once you're done, once you've done with that, make sure you save everything. Make sure you can build via and boom. Oh, look at that. There are not enough available endpoints to support all functions. Please disable one or more of the following. Mouse keys, extra keys, console, yada, yada, yada. Let's disable mouse keys. Mm, what was the syntax for that? Mouse keys disable. Wait, it's already disabled. What else can I remove? Extra key? No. Mm. Yeah, it looks like extra key is the only thing I can remove now in order to make it work. That sucks. That sucks big time. But let's just put it in for now because all of this is just for testing. Let's just try and build it for the time being. Oops, make sure I spell it correctly. Error, there are not enough available endpoints still. What? Make boot magic light mode. I could try that. Yeah, this is editing more than I intended to. Please disable one or more of the following. It's, it's, it's not an issue about space. That's the thing. It's an issue about endpoints. So extra key I've already set to no. What else can I do here? Uh... Here, let's just Okay. Let's see how many things can I Oh wait, cuz I set extra key enabled to yes. That's stupid. How many things can I disable before I get it working? Just try that. It's annoying. Super annoying. There we go. Okay, that seems to work. Extra key is now defined 2x, is it? Oh, I see it, yeah. I would actually prefer not to have to deal with that. So let's see if I can get by without declaring it. Okay. No, I do have to set it to no. Okay. Unfortunate. Unfortunate. Oh, wow. There's a lot going on here. Uh, 
Uh oh. Iteration two invokes undefined behavior. Okay, that's not just a d disabling features issue. That's something else going on with the firmware here. Fatal error, arm none, GCC returned one exit. LTO wrapper failed. Okay, that's that's something else. You've hit the EEPROM RAM size limit. There's 64 byte memory buffer and VIA wants 1024. Oof. Zark, what do you recommend I do for this? Feel like there's only so much I can disable before for the board becomes unusable. An extra key enable. E prom driver equals transient. Okay, let's try that. Let us try that. For for those of you who don't know, Zark is also a QMK collaborator. He joined us late last year. Okay. Let's try that. Let's try your recommendations. So the first thing he recommended is eprom underscore driver equals transient. So let's do that. Then the other thing he recommended was pound defined transient eprom size 1024. I'm assuming this goes into the config file, not the rules.mk. See, I suppose I could define a, a config.h within the actual, oops, not config.hj, config.h. There we go. All right, let's try that out. All right, there we go. Compiled without, well, firmware size check does not yet support Cortex. Okay, yeah, yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Okay. So that was a little bit more involved than usual. Typically speaking, typically, typically speaking, especially on an Atmega 32U4 board, all you really need are those two, those two lines, VIA enabled and LTO enabled. Because this board is programmed differently within QMK firmware, we've had to do a little more meanderings. I'll have to explore this more in depth off screen because this is something I'm still learning as well. I feel like every board that I do, it's always something different. So yeah, okay. So with that, we can then flash the board. Okay, we can then flash the board with our VIA enabled QMK firmware. Zark's telling me something here. He says, unfortunately, it'll mean EEPROM is not saved at any point. So VIA will be programmable, but needs to be uploaded <laughs> every time you plug it in. Oh my gosh, that's terrible. So don't unplug your board, don't power off your computer. <laughs> That's like, that would be no different than, than auto hotkey, I guess. <laughs> if you were like switching your, 
switching your board from computer to computer. Yeah. Okay. Okay, so yeah, that's that's the bad thing, but as I was saying, this is to show you how to port or how to put via support onto a board. This is a very atypical case. Um so far I've ported several boards Oh, I've I've added via support for several boards, including including the latest one that I did was the Duck Eagle Viper V2. So even with so, as I was saying, this Noah is a very a a typical a atypical case because I thought that the that the Duck Eagle V2 would actually give me a lot of problems, but it didn't. Zark says, there's an emulated EEPROM for F4 in the pipeline, so it'll work eventually. Okay, okay. Cool, I'm glad someone is working on it. But let's keep exploring on how to actually put VIA. So we are going to make an assumption that the problems that Zark put forth are not problems at all. And all you really had to do, oops, all you really had to do was put in these two lines, lines one and two, and compile your VIA firmware and flash it on your board. Let's assume that's really all you had to do. The next step, the next step you need to do is locate it all in keyboard layout editor which you can see on the left here um, what you want to do is try and emulate what your board looks like so just for show let's let's grab one of the layouts here okay so the matrix noah advertises two layouts there's one where you have the bottom row is 1.5, 1, 1.5, 1 7, 1 1.5. And then there's another one in which you, wow, that's a really strange bottom row. Look at that. So 1.5, and then that's not even a one U spacer. It's more like 0.75. Still a seven U space bar. But instead of two 1.25 views, it's just one 1.5. Okay, so what we want to do is you want to emulate the base case. So the base case is this layout one over here with the three 1.25 views, the 6.25 views space bar, and the two 1.25 views. Yeah, so let's emulate that really quick. Um, shift key is 1.75. Oops, it's not where you change it. Three. Okay. So what I'm doing here is I'm just trying to recreate that layout. There we go. One, two, three, four. I just need four. Like so. Like that. Okay, does that look the same as the base case? Yes, it does. 
Yes, it does. Okay. So the next thing you want to do is actually get rid of all of the legends. So click on the tools tab here and click remove all legends. Clear that out. Oh yeah. So if you guys want to see, see the entire procedure for this, check out can I use via.com and click on read the docs. Everything you need to know to do that will be contained within these docs. So definitely like, like this is, this is actually what I'm following right now, but I've done this about five times already. So I think, I think I know the procedure, hopefully, hopefully. Okay. So after you've cleared all of the legends here, what you want to do is actually label all of these the same as the switch matrix. The way you find the switch matrix is you go into your keyboards.h file. In this case, because the board's name is Noah, it would be your Noah.h, like so. And as you can see, there are different layout macros defined, like so. All right. So because I can't appropriately visualize this, we're just going to look at QMK configurator and click on the Noah. Let's find the base case. The base case is apparently layout underscore default kind of, except what's different is that the backspace is two one U keys even though we're trying to make it just a regular two U key. So we'll, we'll deal with it when we get there. Meanwhile, let's just start populating it. What you want to populate is this very top legend here, the very top leftmost legend. So just to make things easy, we'll, we'll start populating it by row. So what these two numbers mean is the first number is the row number and the second number is the column number. We'll just do all of the rows right now. Like, like that. And we're going to look over here at the code at the Noah.h. And if it's written correctly, or maybe not correctly, but if it's written in the way that I prefer, <laughs> you should see K followed by two numbers. The first number is the row number. And the second number is the column number. If it's written like that, this should be fairly simple. You look at this very top, it goes from every row is zero and every column goes nine. And it goes hex 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15. No problem. No problem at all. So let's just start populating the columns correctly. So what's going to happen at the very end of this is that we will get via on this board, but as Zark said earlier, once we unplug the board, we'll lose our entire key map. So this is not something I'm going to check into, into QMK nor submit to via right away because that would just ruin someone's day. <laughs> okay. I just stopped over here because the layout default has two one U keys, but where, whereas I just want to retain one two U key for, for the backspace. So we're going to go back to QMK configurator and we'll find a layout in which the backspace is two U. There we go. Such as layout ISO. We're going to look at layout ISO 
we realize that the 2u backspace is actually k0e. So that means, what, what is it skipping? It's, it's skipping d, which is 10, 11, 12, 13. It's skipping 13. So this guy is actually 14, 15. Boom, there we go. Now everything else should be the same as, lay as, as layout default. Goes 10, 11, 12, 13, 14. Super simple. Doesn't skip anything. I'll just go through this slowly, but we'll get there. It's a tedious process. I keep saying that I want to write a script for this. Just because if you've noticed any of my VODs, the more I do them, um, someone ends up being like, oh, Merlin, I, I just wrote a script. You don't have to do that anymore. And I get super lazy and I don't like bother explaining why we do the way that we do. I'm just like, oh yeah, just take this, run the script and copy and paste. Super simple. Anyone can do it. Okay. And we're looking at this, it goes 9, 10, 11, skips 12. Skips 12, then 13, 14. Two, three, four, Five, six, seven, nine, ten, eleven. I said that it skips twelve, so the next one should be thirteen and fourteen. Now to row number three, which goes three zero, then it skips one, it jumps to three two, oops, wrong key, three two, let's skip anything else, it skips 15, that's fine. Don't have to worry at all about that. Seven, eight, nine, ten, fourteen. There we go. Solji Osu says, Hey Merlin, how is the porting going? The porting into QMK is already done and done by... Who did the porting? Let me look at the readme. Done by Astro. I feel like Astro did the DP60 as well. Uh, yeah, I'm pretty sure he did the DP60 as well. But yeah, the porting into QMK is already done. What I'm doing is adding via support and this board is a little different than usual. Um, Zark mentioned that even if we got via support on it, as soon as we unplugged the keyboard, all of the key maps that we did would just be wiped off just like that. So I am very curious to see if that's actually true, if that's really what will happen, but we'll see. We'll see, we'll see. Right now I'm explaining how to do the via portion of it, not not the QMK portion. We're down to our last row. We go four zero, four one, four two, four three, four four. Four, five, 
4, 6, 4, 7, 4, 8. That was easy. 4, 6, 4, 7, 4, 8. So technically right now we have support for one layer or for, for one layout in VIA. And I'm just going to make sure I save this so I don't I don't lose all that information. Just gonna save it like that. There we go. Saved. Side up says, so when it was saying all 4.0, does that mean that all the buttons did the same thing? What it meant, yeah, pretty much. It would mean that it was all being registered as row four, column zero. So in this, in that case, that would be, that would literally be, I'm setting all those keys to your control key because it would be row four, column zero. You don't want to do that. So you absolutely need this chart, this layout macro that we have in, in QMK. You would either use this or you use a multimeter to, to actually poke at the PCB. Zark says DP60, SMK60, Matrix M12 OG, Matrix NOAA exclusive E6 RGB. What is the significance of those boards? Are those all Astro boards? Okay. So as I was saying, um, we now have support for one layout in VIA. But if you look at the actual Geek Hack page, you'll see they have, they have they have other options. See, you've got an option for splitting your two U backspace into two one U's. You have the option of splitting your left shift into what is this one and one point two five U. You have an option of going to ANSI to ISO. No idea why you'd want to do that. And you also have an option of different kinds of bottom rows. So Wilbur has, has advised me that we should also provide these options to, to, to people. And the order in which these options should be provided have to go from top to bottom, left to right. So the first option that a user should encounter is backspace, followed by ANSI ISO, followed by left shift, followed by right shift, if any, followed by bottom row. Solji says, wow, Merlin hating on ISO. <laughs> okay, so I have a little story about that. Side up says 20 years ago, I only used ISO keeps. I too only use ISO keeps and I hated it. Um, I grew up in Taipei, Taiwan. My first couple keeps were all ISO. Um, coincidentally, my first couple mechanical keeps in my adult years were also ISO. I, I used to run a, it was a full sized G80. It had like a numpad, a macro pad and Afro and all that, but the ANSI was an ISO enter. But yeah. Okay. So we, we are going to try and replicate all this. And the way to do that is by creating groups and option numbers. So if you click on your backspace here and you click on the bottom rightmost segment, you can type two numbers separated by comma. The first one is the group number, which should be zero comma option number is zero. Don't put a space there like what I did. Zero, zero. Sounds pretty simple, right? So now you want to do, right, add two separate keys like so. And this is going to be part of the same group, which is your backspace group. 
also zero, but now this is option one, like so. So just to make this all pretty and everything, I'm just gonna move stuff around like so. Next, you wanna make sure that these guys are actually accounted for. So we know that these are 13 and 14. So that would be zero comma 13 and zero comma 14 in terms of its row and column. And we know that by looking at these guys right here, this top row. Yeah, so zero one, Side, side up, these, these represent two different things. The first number is the group number, which is group zero. The second number is the option. So in this case, the backspace, think of the backspace as a group. These are all the possible combinations that can go into backspace, that's group zero. Um, option zero is your two U backspace. Option one is your two one U backspace. Like so. Next up, the next thing you want to do is the ISO key. Once again, I don't know why you want to do that, but you know, for the sake of education, we, we, we will do it. Okay, we're gonna do add ISO enter key right there. Let's just Move that, move that all the way over here. Ah! There we go. Okay, let's give it enough room so you can add that one U key. There we go. Like so, that should be fine. Okay, similar to how we did the groups, we're gonna name this, this group, group one, because it's a completely different group than the backspace. This is the enter key group. So it's gonna be group one, and this particular key is gonna be option zero. The same goes for the tilt for the pipe symbol. So that's also group one, option zero. These are part of the same group, part of the same option. These two guys right here will still be part of the same group, which is group one, but is now option one, like so. And now comes the difficult part of figuring out which key is which. So let me once again consult layout ISO. Layout ISO is one, two, three. So that's 14, 13, 12. Okay, makes sense. 213. And 212. Like so. That should do it. Okay. Next up, based on that, from top to bottom, left to right, would be the left, left shift key which we now need to move the whole thing to the right a bit. So we can make room for these two keys. I believe that's 1.25. 1.25. Oh, that's too much, too much. Oops. Uh, 
There we go. Let's do that. See, what else do I need to do here? Oh yeah. Okay. Um, hold on. Let's see. This would be three zero and three one actually. Three zero and three one based on what I'm seeing here in the layout ISO three zero three one. Um so some people would argue that you, you should put the enter key ISO and the left shift all as part as one group. Some people would say that just because if you do ISO, you, you typically have that one U key for your left shift. But as I mentioned earlier, I used to have a Cherry G80 board in which the only thing ISO there was this key, was this ISO enter key and that one U next to it. But the left shift was normal. It was a normal 2.25 U. So because of that, I am inclined to put the left shift as part of a different group. So we already have group zero and one. This next group should be two. So the base case is gonna be group two, comma zero, option zero. This next one over here is gonna be also group two, option one. And what else? Okay, now here is the part that gets tricky. But this right shift doesn't change at all. It will always be 1.75U. The next thing you need to do is this bottom case. It's gonna be difficult. Let's copy and paste it really quick. Copy, paste. Here we go. Oops. Uh, uh, uh. Let's see. Okay. Let's start with this bottom row first. So this would be 1.5, 1, 1.57, and 1.5. So then we can edit it. 1.5, 1. 1.5, 1. 1. Let's just delete that. This can be just seven. Uh, and 1.5. There we go. Like so. It's a good one. Solji says, why copy and paste the whole row? So I don't have to keep adding keys. Okay, so once again, I'm going to go back to QMK configurator and find the layout that matches that the best. And oof. Oh, here we go. This is it. Layout WKL. So according to layout WKL, let's look at this bottom row over here. 
it is 4041424345 like so great then the rest is all the same 464748 perfect okay all right the next one the next bottom row we want is this guy right here this really strange one that's looking like a 1.5 1 1.57 and 1.5 oof okay we're gonna copy and paste this whole row again copy paste Let's move it over. Okay, so based on that, we can delete that key. I think I have to shift some things around a little bit. Yeah, shift it over. It's kind of weird. There we go. That's it. That's it right there. Okay. Is that it? Yeah, that that looks it. Okay. So here we go. This is where we have to create a third group. See, we, we already have group zero, which is the backspace. We have group one, which is the ANSI slash ISO enter. Group two is the left shift. So now this, this whole thing right here can be group three. Group three. Okay. So the base case should be three zero everything else here should change so this first case here this first option should be three one this bottom one should be three two there we go and now now we should have it correct i think i think we'll see we'll see here, let's just make it all pretty. Let's make it all pretty. Speaking of making it pretty, Via also colors in your mods and your alphas and your accent keys. So we're we're gonna do that. We're gonna do that. And this is where I get confused. I think it's accent keys are seven 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 or multiple sevens actually so let's change the key color to there we go and then you want your mods to all be a's that's a mod that's a mod arrow keys are also mods so just select all your mods all the mods and i just realized something i just re realized something before i do that the arrow keys don't actually ever change so I don't actually need to put them in a group. I don't need to put them in a group, guys. I can just... See? If you notice, their row and column never change. So I don't ever have to put them in a group. I could just do it like that. And not worry about them at all. There we go. That should do it. Should absolutely do it. Um, hold on. Let's 
one thing we have to be cautious about that when you have gaps like this pretty sure you need to add an additional key yeah let's do that so let's add add the key and this is going to be 0 0.75 yeah there we go And you don't need to put any row or column number on this. What you do need to do is add the group number, which is 32. And scroll to the very bottom and click decal like that. That's what you need to do. Because the arrow keys aren't touched, we don't need to do the same on this end. It's only when you have a gap between keys that are within the same group and option. All right. So, so let's save that really quick. Thank you, Zark. And we should be good with all three options or with all the options that the Noah can provide. Oh, I just remembered. We need to call in all of our mods. Let's call, let's color it in. And you know what? We don't even need to list these out. Just take those all out. Delete, delete, delete. Just like that. Just like that. Mm. I think these are also mods. There we go. So mods are A's, I believe, according to Wilbus, little informational. Okay, let's change that to all sevens. We should be good with our KLE. That looks fine. Okay, so what do you do with this? What do you do with this? This, that's, that's a very good question. Um, what you want to do is actually download the JSON file, not the raw file, like what you do with con QMK configurator, but you need to download the JSON. So download the JSON for now and just hold on to that. Hold on to that. In VIA, you need to create its JSON file and its JSON file has several properties. Number one, it's got a name property. Number two, it's got the vendor and product ID. Number three, lighting options. Number four, the actual matrix, which is where the KLE JSON goes into. Oh no, sorry, not, not quite yet. That's the size of your electrical matrix. And the layout, which is where the KLE JSON goes into. And that's that. So the way I like to do this is, let's, let's do this. Let's create a new branch. Mm. Okay. Let's do this really quick. There we go. Okay. So now I am in the via repository 
and how I like to do this. Let's see who made this board? Matri Matrix. Okay. Let's create a directory called Matrix within the source directory. And within Matrix, let's create a file called Noah.json. So I like to copy and paste. So we're just gonna grab from something that I've done before. Let's pick the 1UP60 RGB from 1UP keyboards, copy and paste all that and change as necessary. So with the name, let's just call it Matrix Noah. And in terms of the rows and columns, that's once again, something that you can grab from QMK. And I'm just gonna grab that info off screen really quick. It's five by 15. Five by 15, which, which is correct. And we can, for the most part, we can keep the labels intact. But this key map section, this is what we can delete. So make sure you delete it bracket to bracket. Save what you got there. And vendor and product ID. Okay, this is the important part. VIA distinguishes between boards based on the board's vendor ID and its product ID. This is all located in your config.h. So according, according to QMK firmware, this, the vendor ID is MX, which is 4D58. We're just gonna put that in really quick. 4D58. And the product ID is zero zero six five where do people come up with these zero zero six five okay um the lighting is custom so it's not backlight or rgb for the time being we're just going to set it to none like i said we're just all testing this and this this is where you want to paste the JSON file that you created earlier, that you downloaded earlier. Copy and paste it and you should be good. And we, we didn't have right shift, so we can actually take this part out. The bottom row has, what were our options? Uh, layout one STD. Layout one seven U. I guess. And the last would be layout two. Yeah, that should be it. The three different layouts. Lack 29 subscribe with Twitch Prime. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, man. Okay. So I believe that I have this correct. And the way to check it is to actually boot up VIA. So we're gonna boot up VIA right now. And VIA, where are you? Where are you at? Kind of big, but sure, why not? Okay, so when you boot up VIA and you have a VIA board connected to it, like what I do over here, that's a ZL60 Rev4, which is designed by Wilba as well. When you when you load up VIA, you'll already have this kind of layout, see? So just to give you an example of why we were so concerned about the layouts, you can click on layouts over here. See all that? You can change it. You can change it up very, very easily. 
do that. Look at all that. Look at all those changes. See? See that? Okay. But when you're testing, when you're testing your JSON file, the, the way you want to do this is click on, on this design tab right here and press load and navigate to that JSON file that you created. What's that JSON file that we created? It's called the matrix, matrix Noah. Matrix Noah. And with any luck, once you load it up, it should look exactly like the base layout. Or here goes. And as you can see, I, I screwed it up. <laughs> I screwed it up. But just to be just to be sure, let me let, let me just boot up Via again, you know, like there there is a chance that i didn't screw it up and there's something something with via that's that's different highly unlikely but you know okay yeah i definitely messed something up with it okay scratch that scratch that we will take a look at this section again um keyboard layout editor what am i missing do i have groups and options all all labeled correctly yeah i think the json file is correct there's something something else going on Okay, group zero is backspace and you have default and split. Group one is enter key and you have ANSI and ISO. Group two is left shift and you have default and split. And the bottom row, you have layout one STD, standard, layout one seven U, and layout two. That, that should be correct. Mm, I don't know what's going on. Keiki Uu says, is the Noah the only matrix board with QMK compat? No, but it is one of two. I believe the other one is matrix, the M12 OG. Delete your decal key in group three, option two, says Olivia. Let, let's try that out. Delete. Okay, let's try that. We will download the JSON file again, open it up, copy, delete the key map section, paste. Okay. Let's open up V again and click design tab, load. Open up noah.json, knock on wood. Nope. Olivia, I feel like every time you come on my stream, I mess up via. <laughs> okay, what else? What else could I have done wrong here? Um, rows are five, columns or 15 is that correct five fifteen yeah that, that's correct so it's not my matrix that's wrong something else that i'm missing 
Olivia says I am a curse. <laughs> Hmm, hmm, hmm. All right, let me close up Via really quick. What, what could possibly be wrong next? Well, it's good that you're on because I feel like the last time you were on and something went haywire, it was a it was a legit bug and you were glad that I found it. So today could be a bug too. Maybe. Hopefully. Okay, what what would cost that? What cost it last time? What cost it last time was that my rows and columns weren't appropriately labeled. Ooh, ooh, okay. I think I know why. There's actually 16 columns, not 15 columns. It's 16 columns. It's 16 columns. That's that's why. Let, let me fix that up. Okay. 16. Via should work now. Knock on wood. Knock on wood. Okay. Design load. Ta da! There we go. Yep. Yep, that was the issue. Olivia says, Wait, did you update your VIA from the last time we had that problem? No, I have not. How do you update it? Can, can you update it directly from VIA itself? Look, I'm running 1.2.4. Nope, there is no auto update. Yeah, there we go. It worked. Okay. So the next issue the next issue we need to deal with is based on what Zark said earlier about if you were to flash the board. If you flash the board, um, Via will Via will still work, but once you unplug the board, the key mapping disappears. So let's try that. Let's try that. Let's just try that. Let's actually put it together. Put your switches away for now. But yeah, you know, just to... Olivia, to make you happy, I'm gonna download the latest via. Download the latest via. Download via. Wait, I'm already at 1.2.4. Look, 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 look. See? And I click download via. It goes 1.2.4. I think I didn't release it. Oh! <laughs> there we go. Okay. All right. That's fine. That's fine. We'll... We'll go back to what I was trying to do here. Okay, we're gonna open up, open up this PCB. 
Open up this PCB. It's like opening up a wedding invite. Cozy says, oh my God, the layout toggles on VR are lovely. I absolutely love it. I absolutely, okay, okay. Just, just to talk about that a little bit of why I love it. One of my most common questions on QMK configurator is here. Let's take a board such as the DZ60. One of my most common questions is, here we go, here we go. On a layout like this, on a layout like this, my most common question is, uh, my space bar is 6.25U. What do I do here? Do I fill them all up? Which is the correct answer? Or do I select one? And it's the same question when they have your standard layout and they're trying to fill out this right side, you know? It's like such a common question. <laughs> but yeah, yeah, yeah. In, in, enough of my ranting. Olivia says released. <laughs> okay, I will download it once I unwrap this PCB. I've broken the seal. Let's open this PCB. So sticky. Ooh. Here we go. Check it. Check it out, guys. See that? Very pretty. In switch RGB. And it seems to be like there are multiple ports you can plug the USB C into. That's, that's what it's looking like. And these tabs here are all just snap off. Yep. Personally, I'm always like really afraid when I snap them off because I have this like innate fear that, I, that I'll like snap it off way too hard and break part of the PCB. You know? But yeah. Right, let's do this. Let's do this. Okay, I have to... I mean, that's a valid fear. It is, it is. I've, I've encountered many boards with it. I have yet to, to break one. This might be my first. No, I'm just kidding. I'm just kidding, Olivia. I wouldn't do that. Okay. No, anyone know what these connectors are called? These ones, these are really, really tiny. Like the ones that go into stuff like that, to that small. I could really use one of these cables because I broke mine on my grid 600. JST-SH. -SH. Okay, I'll look at dash SH. All right, we are going to open up just this part so I can grab one of the cables and connect it to a USB. Um, I'm looking at this PCB right now and I'm not seeing a reset switch anywhere. So how do I reset this PCB? Is the reset switch on the USB-C daughter board? No, it is not. So, how do you reset this PCB? Maybe I'm not seeing the reset switch. Scan row by row. Not seeing. Oh look, there are breakouts for reset. So I guess I could reset it that way. See? On the corner here, there's reset and ground, so I could reset it. 
that way, but there's no actual reset switch to drop into bootloader mode. Hold on. Do they have instructions? I'm just scrolling through the Geek Hack group by. Hopefully they have something. Nevin says pH. I know ones that look like that are pH and then the pin spacing like two milliliters. So that would be pH two. Okay. I might just buy like a whole bunch of them and just mix and match. We'll see. I think those are one millimeter spacing. Could be wrong. Someone says, as I mentioned many posts above, NOAA will be sold in stock, but don't expect any updates until after Chinese New Year. Okay, looks like this board will be in stock, probably after the coronavirus has been dealt with. But I'm not seeing any form of instructions. No form of instructions or links to instructions anywhere. Okay. I am going to assume that the only way to reset this board to drop into bootloader is to short reset and ground on these breakouts. While the board is plugged in. So let's try that. Yeah, I'm not seeing a reset switch anywhere. Now some boards have it in front, but this doesn't have it either. All right, let's do this. Let's do this. It's like kind of like a semi build stream. Does this have ESD protection? Probably not. I don't see an ESD chip anywhere. Okay. I'm assuming I can just plug this anywhere? Huh? I have like one, two, three, four, five five options to plug this in. I'm assuming it's gonna be the one closest to the USB port, which would be this. Here, let's, let's, let's do it. I'm just gonna put the board closer to the camera, like so. You're gonna plug, I'm gonna plug this in right there. Cause these are really short cables. So that's way too short. Would have, would have to be this. Huh? I'm just going to plug the board in. <clears throat> plug the board in. Where's my USB-C cable? Here we go. I plugged it in and Mac OS detected the board, perfect. Let's see, can I type boards? Can I type words, I mean? 
Where is my little... There we go. Yeah, Olivia, let me... Let me test your board on stream. Reset. Just make sure everything works. Uh -uh. Two and three didn't seem to register there. There we go. There we go. Q and W, huh? Q, W, W. Okay. Missing keys here. Uh oh. That's not registering. There we go. A S D F G H. J, there we go. There we go, space bar finally worked. All right, uh, congratulations, Olivia. Looks like your board works. If only there was a key tester in VIA. If only, if only I had remembered <laughs> okay, looks like your board works. Um, I'm going to try flashing it. I'm going to try flashing it with this VIA that we created. This VIA firmware that we created. just gonna try um I'm willing to bet it's gonna go exactly how Zark anticipated in which it will work until you unplug the board 
it might not reset the way you think. The way I think is that I'm going to hold reset and ground here for a good couple seconds, and then it'll reset. That, that's what I'm thinking. But let's see if the readme has any clues on how to do this. Nope, readme has no clues on how to do this. Might require some boot zero goodness. Okay. Well, if that's the case, that a lot of that information is missing from from the readme. That's not good. Okay. Let's try this. Let's try this. What are the chances of me bricking this? <laughs> Line nine of README says pre-programmed bootloader, which emulated USB stick to ease firmware updating. Ooh, what does that mean? What does that mean for, for applications? Ah, I see Zark just added me. Yeah. The stream's about five seconds delayed. Mm -mm. It'll show up as a removable USB stick. Kind of like the Tada 68. Won't be usable with toolbox. Okay. So if that's the case, I should just... Here, let me do this. Let me just make the VIA firmware first and drag and drop. Okay, let's, let's see what happens here. See if I notice anything show up in my Okay. Uh that's not very helpful. There must be a key that I can hold while plugging in but let's see swg ground clock reset okay let's let's try let's try okay i just i just grounded the reset and ground pins Mm, did not see any disk pop up of sorts. There's got to be some key that I can just hold while while plugging in. This, this is quite the pain. Fallen Zaya says, sup, what you doing? I'm trying to put via on the, no on the matrix Noah. And right now I'm having difficulty to figuring out what the reset switch is. I'm assuming it's these two pins. The key map has FN plus tab for boot. Okay, let's try that. I'm gonna need two then. Okay, let's take a look at what the, the key map says. Where's the FN key? The FN key. Ah, okay.
Okay, you can try that and tab. Let me find myself another wire of sorts. Mm -mm -mm. Where can I shoot my wire go? Grab another tweezer. Let's grab another tweezer. Okay. If I'm not mistaken, tab key is right there. So if I can just hold that. I'm gonna watch. Tab key. Okay, did anything happen there? Not seeing any disk pop up. Let's see. Nope, it's not it either. Alt. That's got to be the FN key. Yeah, it's not going into reset even with FN and tab. Not like the Tada. What is that freaking key? Mm -hmm. Hold on. Hold on. Let's let's just ver let's just verify that what I'm pressing is actually the FN key. Yep, that is most definitely the, the FN key. Pressing tab. Should should have done it. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's not happening. Does anyone on stream have a NOAA and know how to reset this board? Because FN and tab doesn't do it. Me trying to short it on these pins doesn't do it either. The next thing to try would be escape. FN is an escape, maybe.
looking for it won't execute the custom bootloader anyway yeah I'm not getting it to go into into bootloader mode at all so how do you flash this board here I'm gonna do a quick Google search matrix Noah how to flash QMK nothing it just keeps tying back to the geek hack page which has like seven pages maybe the information is buried somewhere in there but for now i can't can't easily search for it Whoa, this IC got kind of toxic. <laughs> okay, all right. Yeah. yeah, guys, I think I'm kind of stuck at this point. If I can't reset the board, I can't really flash QMK on it to, to test what we were thinking would happen. Oof. I'll probably play around with it even more. Maybe just FN and other key combinations, but FN tab doesn't do anything for it. That's unfortunate. Yeah, there's no other clues in the silk screen either. Jack Static, hello. You are coming in at the tail end of my stream, especially when I'm unable to find that reset key. But yeah, I think I'm going to play around with, with this a little bit more off stream, see if I can find that reset key, and probably take time to read through this Seven page. Nevin says, is being plugged into VIA hanging the reboot? Here, let's try. I'm just going to quit VIA right now. I'm going to quit VIA. And I'm going to trigger what is supposedly the reset sequence. Holding FN right now and touching tab. Nope didn't happen nothing happened there jack static says fn plus r i highly doubt it but let's try kind of out of options here which one is r q w e r that guy right there switch 205 Switch 205 is R. I think the reason why Heine does, does it FNR is because I do it FNR. Okay, that FNR didn't do anything. And no, no hard drive showed up either. Yeah, that's, that's most likely not it. Nothing's wrong with the board. I just can't find that reset switch. It's not FN tab. I'm able, I'm, I'm able to trigger all, all of the other function keys. Here, let me show you. So I know that I'm doing, that I'm holding this, this FN correctly. See, look, we're going to trigger F1. F1. We're all done. Turn it again. F1. Oh, hold on. It's not triggering. 
Wait a second, why is that not triggering anymore? Oh, there we go. Okay. See, I'm able to trigger it correctly like that. No onboard reset button. Yeah. There's no onboard reset button. And nothing shows up. Okay. So the other option is um on the what was that board let, let me look at my notes there are two boards that i encountered that did this the first board was the tada and the other board was a oh god there's a gray studio board cod 67 those are the only two boards in which when you triggered the reset sequence it would show up as a hard drive and neither of those worked on Mac. I had to boot up my Windows system or my Linux system to get it working. So that might be what's happening right now because I'm running a Hackintosh. So that's, the, that's an option. That's an option why it's not working. And to do that, I'm gonna have to do, do it off stream, but that, that might be it. I'm actually, now, now that I think about it, I have a strong suspicion that that's it. A very strong suspicion. Uh, no, no. I suppose I could connect it to the living room and figure it out, but yeah. Mm. Okay. Well, I will post updates, I guess. Um, come Sunday, I'll be doing my keyboard chores stream. And hopefully by then I would have diagnosed something or another. I'll be trying it out on my Linux system and on Windows. If I remember correctly, I absolutely had to use Windows for it to work properly. But I don't know. I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. All right. Okay, with that, I think it's a perfect time to start ending this stream. But yeah, thank you everyone for joining in. Number one, thank you so much to Olivia for providing me this board, which I will build at some point in the future and lube her switches and send it back off to her. Um, I guess she's the sponsor, quote unquote sponsor of, of this stream, letting me port via onto it. Um, also special thanks to my generous my generous tier one sub gifters. That's Cozy Fanatuti, that's Mr. Petrov, Olivia and 159. You guys just pretty much increased my, my subscriber count by 40 just because of you guys. Thank you so much. And thank you to everyone who not only followed but subbed and donated bits. You guys make this channel fun. You make this channel you encourage me to keep doing this. So thank you so much. My next stream should be this coming Saturday. I am I am at a loss as to what I should build first. My Xeno, my Jane, or if I should do this, this board right here, we'll see. We'll see what I'm feeling like that day. But yeah, we'll see how far I get on this. I would rather I would much prefer to get QMK working on this before I build it, so I'm not taking things apart, putting it back together, taking it apart again. But yeah, thanks guys. Thanks guys, and I'll see you this Saturday. Have a good rest of your week.